here we go. We're pulling it out of the jungle. There we go. It's covered in grass. Yeah, it is. I hope. Oh, okay, you're ready to roll. So the head's already been switched. Maybe the car runs? No, no way! Welcome to today's video everybody and we are back at the Love Hotel, previously Love Hotel, now turned into an automotive enthusiast mechanic dream heaven location place here in Okinawa, Japan. And as you guys know, the S15 is stored up in the back there and we got some work to do today because I want to get this thing ready for transport. Now previously I thought this thing didn't run and as you guys know, we got the engine running on this which Still blows my mind that this thing ran like there was nothing wrong with it. It's actually insane. Um, that aside, we have a few air suspension issues. I'm hoping that they're just simple, like tighten up fittings or you know trim the line and re-plug it in and it all should seal because I'd like to transport this thing without having to mess around with suspension because the, the bolts and stuff are gonna be rusty. But if we have to change out the front suspension or the rear, we do have some spare like old coilovers here. Um, also, I just need to sort out everything in the trunk and get that all situated. I actually already mounted the battery in here so that's not moving anywhere and we gotta go through and like wrap up this head so that's not gonna go anywhere while it's in the back and nothing's gonna fall out. But we've got a lot of work to get done today. I also need to do some more maintenance on the engine. I wanna drain the oil again. I want to take the oil pan off and get as much of that gunk out of there and just check if there's anything sitting at the bottom of the oil pan. We'll also be able to get a good look at the rods, um, at least in cylinder one, and we'll be able to confirm whether or not this has a forged bottom end still in it. Because who knows, you know, the, the shop guy, you know, could have uh, switched out the engine entirely and just put a stock motor in there and sold the forged 2.1. We don't know, right? So I'd like to confirm that as well as clean out any more moisture in there because the oil was still looking pretty milky after we drained it the first time, which is pretty normal. I'm expecting a couple more flushes before it gets good again. But yeah, there's still a lot that needs to be done on this and I need this thing to be reliably like starting and running so that we don't have to transport this on a pallet and we can just transport it as drive on, drive off, which would be awesome, which is another reason why we need to make sure the air suspension's all gooch. On our way here, I stopped by Astro Products to grab myself a few tools that I'm gonna need for today. And this is definitely a little bit of a interesting uh, haul dishwash detergent, a spray bottle, a wire brush. This is mainly to clean RTV off the oil pan, so when we reseal it with the RTV, we're all good there. Um, but this is gonna be the main tool that I'm gonna use to find leaks in the air suspension. We're gonna fill this thing up with some water, add a bit of dish dishwashing detergent to it, and we got some soapy water to spray on all the lines and see where the bubbles are so we can find where the leaks are and if we can fix it. If we can fix it, it's a win. So, simple stuff. Um, this is also very, very good to have just for checking for boost leaks when you feel like all your intercooler piping up with compressed air to find any leaks or anything like that. Also, you guys know, gamer subs. This thing's gonna give me a lot of energy for today. It's one of their new waifu cups, actually. Love this thing, she's cute. Um, yeah, if you guys want some gamer subs, the best energy drink, the cheapest, the best tasting one, I'm currently enjoying the citrus lemonade one. But yeah, gamersups.gg, use code SAMIT, 10% off. Don't sleep on that. So I got the wheel off and actually I'm pretty excited. It's the first time I've taken any wheels off this car and I got a really good look at everything that's going on in here. Um, the rotors on this are massive. These are Evo 8 Brembo brakes, which is crazy cool. It's got this cool adapter plate down there. Looks like the GK Tech knuckles were taken off and swapped with stock ones. I've sprayed WD-40 on every nut and bolt here that looks crusty so that it can start penetrating and hopefully it'll all come across, like come off a lot easier later when we pull this apart. And I started spraying some, just some WD-40 for now on some of the bad rust as well so that that can at least like try to prevent it from getting any worse for now. Um, but for the most part, it's exactly what I thought it was. You know, you can see the tubs are gonna need to be redone. They're pretty bad and rusty through there. Um, but the frame for the most part above where the cut lines were is really, really good. Most of this is sealed up kind of nice here, so that's good. Just up here, which will cut and grind all this extra rust out. We'll cut that out and just bring this line up more. Um, so I think this is actually gonna recover really, really well. I'm, I'm hyped. Like, I'm not seeing really any bad rust that can't be addressed and, and redone. And for now, I, I'm pretty hyped to see like these brakes and rotors and for the first time. You can see like, they just kind of bent and did that dodgy way. I don't know why they didn't just take the hub off and cut them off entirely. But one other thing was when I took the wheels off, look at all these like, I guess, spider eggs or something. Like, 
I don't know, there's just eggshells, these little eggs everywhere here. Um, but started spraying the soapy water around, the main reason why we took the wheel off. And uh, it's not coming from the fitting, it's actually coming from the locking collar under the bag. You can see there the air bubbles coming out. So that's why this bag is leaking and going down. I don't know too much about bag suspension. I'm gonna do some Googling, but we might be able to just tighten the locking collar or maybe I have to pull the bag off and reseal it. I don't know, um, but it's good to see that the bag itself is not like split or cracked or leaking anywhere up there. It's, it's literally just around the locking collar here. So I'm gonna do some research. Uh, maybe I can call like Randy or TJ or something. They can give me some advice on this. I called my stance guy. He knows everything about slam cars with these bags. All right, tell me what you said, Randy. All right, so uh, what the issue can be is maybe the O-ring at the bottom mm -hmm. could be leaking. But before you, that, that's the worst, right? Um, but before you, uh, you know, uh, rule that one out, uh, loosen the locking collar mm -hmm. and tighten the bag onto the collar All right. and try that. Okay, I'll give that a crack. Thank you, right, Randy. I miss you. Come come visit soon, all right? I hope to see you soon, buddy. All right. I will have Peace. a few or many drinks for you tonight. Sounds good. Peace. Peace. <laughs> so this is a mess. We got the coil over or the bag and everything out. Um, and it's all come apart really, really easy, actually. Just a little bit of uh, WD-40 and it all fell apart really nice. Um, this is why it's leaking. The O-ring's actually intact, but there's this crusty kind of stuff around here. Um, as you can see there, and that's just letting air pass. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this all out. The O-ring looks really, really nice. It looks new, actually. I'm gonna clean all that gunk out and re-lube it all up, and it'll probably seal and be fine. So I'm gonna give that one more go before we try and put like this stock crappy suspension in just to get it there. But looks like this bag's gonna live again, so I'm pretty hyped on that. First time working on airbag stuff. This is really kind of interesting. First time for everything. So there's an O-ring here, and there's a little O-ring at the top here. And as long as those are in good condition and lubed up, it should seal and you shouldn't have any leaks. So I'm gonna try and put this all back together. <coughs> Fingers crossed, we don't have a leaky bag anymore. So I just finished rebuilding the bag and everything on the strut. Putting some PSI into this bad boy now. Put that pump on. Let's crank this thing up. Or like 40 PSI in there. Everything goes a lot slower, obviously, because we're only running a pump right now. We'll just crank this up. All right, we're at 60. Now check this out. Let's see. Any leaks? No more leaks, boys. We are in the clear. Hell yeah. You know, I just recently became a BMX Pro. Now I'm a air suspension pro. Love that. Love that. All right, well, you're not going to see me rebuilding bags anytime soon, but... Definitely, I'm really happy that we got this fixed because it makes just life so much easier. I just gotta tighten these bolts down and then uh, we put the wheel back on and this thing should sit and we'll let it sit for the entire time. Keep checking, make sure it's not losing air, but we're good now for transport, I think. Really stoked on that. We're now under the S15. I've gotten all the bolts undone for the oil pan, so. I'm just gonna pry this thing off and I don't know if it's gonna be easy or hard or what, but I think it's gonna be hard. Judging by how much RTV is on here, it's probably really glued on here. I'm gonna fight with this for a little bit. Hopefully we can just kinda find a spot to pry from, but... Oh. Whoa! Whoa! Oh my god! I am so sorry. <laughs> that just flew off. That's where all the moisture was. I just made the biggest mess on the floor. I we even put the plastic down. Thank God for that. <laughs> but it's still on the concrete. That's alright. Cut it. That's that's all the water we've been trying to get out. Okay. Look how nasty that looks. Yeah, that's what happens, man. Like the water, the oil sits on top of the water, so it's so hard to get it all out. But inside the engine looks amazing, actually. Um, that's a little bit of a worry. What the hell is that? It's a metal. There's the valve stem. No, no that's an oil squirter. Oh. That's not good. I found a piece of an oil squirter. Oh no. Hmm. We're gonna have to definitely disassemble this engine when it gets back to the shop. It'll be okay to transport there, but we're not gonna be drifting this at all. Full piece of an oil squirter found inside the engine. 
That means the piston uh, either is it wasn't clearance properly or this was bent. And as the pistons come down, it's smacked onto the oil squirt and snapped off. Should be okay. It's not a big deal. But yeah, we're definitely not going to be drifting or running this thing hard. That's for sure. So I'm not sure who assembled this engine or anything like that or what tricks or if anything was done wrong. But that just looks like it's snapped off. It doesn't look like a piston's really contacted it. I don't see like a hit mark on it. Normally you see like a hit mark from the piston. It just looks like it's snapped off clean. So I don't know. We'll investigate when we get it open. We'll be able to tell. But yikes that's not good and this mess is not good so we got to clean this up <laughs> i'm sorry brett that was not planned i did not know that was going to fall off like that i'm sorry <laughs> all right <laughs> so even though we changed the oil a few times this is this is what we were dealing with so this is oil that's mixed with water see how gunky this is right and there's like a piece of uh like leaf in there vegetation but this is what I was fighting with so this is why I wanted to drop the pan because no matter how many times we we're gonna flush this out it was gonna take like so many changes of oil to get all of this out and it's better for us to just you know try to just drop the pan get it all out in one hit like this I'm glad we did we now discovered that there's pieces of engine in there that we need to get out and but all of this is just that's that's disgusting that's all just water with old oil mixed in with each other and it turns to this sludge and that will, I mean, it'll destroy an engine, 100%, if you keep running it like that. So I'm glad we did this. And yeah, I'm kind of a little bit, I'm a l I mean, I'm not disappointed. I'm sure the engine's going to be okay. We're probably going to be able to just rebuild the engine. Um, we'll use the same pistons, rods, and all that kind of stuff. But I'm, we're not going to know till we disassemble it and pull the lower, the, the upper oil pan off and be able to really see if that, Oil squirter just fell off because when the engine was assembled, someone lent on it with a tool or something when they were, you know, cleaning it. You don't know, right? So we're just going to hope that it just broke off. It wasn't that the, pi the pistons have been put in back to front because there's a little notch. And if your pistons are put in the wrong way and that notch doesn't line up, then your piston's going to smack into that uh, oil squirter. So we don't know what it could be. Um, I'm just hoping it's just fallen off from fatigue. <laughs> but... Most likely something else has happened when whoever assembled this motor, but it's all good. We'll um, we'll go through it all. I'm sure there'll be a lot of stuff that we can save in the engine and uh, it'll be good. But if everything is as lucky as what we've had with this car, it's probably just snapped off. The piston hasn't contacted. Everything was probably fine. It's just an old part or something. And most likely we'll just be able to put a new one on, a new oil squirter and we should be good to go. But. This is disgusting. I'm glad I pulled the pan. Really glad. Hang on, let's have a look inside the pan. Yeah, I've thing. never seen anything like that before. It's what happens when like oil and water sit together that for is so long. Insane. Yeah. So like, there's that oil squirter. You can see here. And like, so the oil squirter kind of points up to the bottom of the piston here, right? And that's spraying in there. And you don't see any contact point along here that indicates the piston smacked it. Unless the piston smacked it right on the brake here. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping it's just an old fatigue part. These break off all the time if people accidentally like lean on them and stuff when they're assembling a motor. Um, like when you go to put the piston in, if you push it too far down, it'll hit it and that'll like crack it. And they fall off all the time. So I'm not overly concerned about that to be honest. This is, look at this here, this is, this is it, this is, this is what the problem was. Look at this. This is the problem. And this is just old oil with moisture. And probably, honestly, what this looks like, the more and more I keep looking at this, I think, all right, I think what happened was this old workshop, all right, Trinity, they did the head swap, and when they took the head off, all the coolant went into the oil, right? Because when you take the head off, the oil and the coolant falls out of the head in there. And I think all of that fell into there. They never drained it. And then just, you know, started it back up after the head was on. And then with all that oil and water in the system, it rusted everything out. That's my hypothesis. I don't think there's a problem with the head gasket for all that we've run it for. There's no oil in the radiator or the cooling system whatsoever. So that's what this looks like to me. When they swap the head, they kept the head, like the engine and the block in the car, and they just lift the head off, all the coolant went into the oil, and yeah, it was very common. You're not supposed to do that. Anyways, I'm gonna clean this all up, 
and uh, we'll put this back on with some fresh quarts of oil. And uh, in a little bit, actually, once I clean this mess up, I'm gonna actually look inside the engine. We're gonna see what pistons and rods are in this thing. And hopefully we might be able to see, we can only see number one, but we will see if the oil squirt is still on number one. And we'll know whether it's three, four, or two, probably those three, but yeah. Anyways, it's kind of cool. Got a nice oil pan at least, like a Tomei one. But yeah, glad we pulled that, because that's how you blow a motor. Also, <laughs> that's how you blow a motor. So a fair bit of time has passed and I've cleaned a bunch of stuff. You can see the oil pan is beautiful now. So that definitely looks like a million bucks. We got some uh, kitty litter down on the ground there to clean that all up. But I have some really good news. And that is, it's really hard to see, but this definitely has Tomei forged rods and pistons in it. You can actually see the rod there. It's got ARP bolts in there as well, connecting rod bolts. So this looks like the bottom end is the forged Tomei bottom end, which is good to see. Something I just noticed is that engine mount bolt there, it's actually loose. Might be hard to see, but it's loose. See the gap there? It's a lot of loose bolts that I'm finding like all over this thing. It's kind of a little sketchy. Um, but like I said, when we get this thing back to the shop, we're pulling this thing apart. Um, I'm also starting to wonder if when the pistons hit the valves, if that's done any damage. Now, typically it all depends on, you know, uh, how hard of a hit it was, like whereabouts the engine was in the compression and how quickly they shut it down and all that kind of stuff as to how much damage was caused. Normally you can get away with if there's any kind of like, you know, damage to the top of the piston, you can kind of clean it up and make it smooth so that there's no problems there. Um, Typically, when talking to Okachan about it, he said that like whenever he's had valve to piston contact on SRs, um, he's been able to literally just take the head off, put a new head on, or redo the valves and just kind of clean the top of the piston with a bit of emery paper, and it's been fine. He's never seen like pistons like get a hole in them that bad or, or damage too bad like that, unless it's like the car kept running nonstop. If it shut off right away, it's safe generally. And he said that generally, so most times you don't even need to touch the piston. There's actually like hardly any damage to it whatsoever. It's just like a tiny little mark and that's it. But yeah, all in all, I think we're good, but I still will be pulling this engine. I want to put that Naprik head on this. I want to, you know, get the engine built as it was and how it was initially put in this car. Um, so we'll get that Naprik head redone. We'll put it on this. And when we have the engine out to do the head, cause I prefer to take the engine out. I'd rather check the clutch as well. Like we might as well do all that and check everything. Um, I'll pull that upper oil pen off and we'll work out what's going on with that oil squirter. And we'll be able to know, you know, what our next move is on that too. But uh, looking at this head, it's definitely Naprik head. You can see it's got the stud conversion done on the cam caps, which is really good to see. Um, and you can see it's got the one millimeter bigger valves on this actually, which is, also super cool. So yeah, I definitely want to get this thing rebuilt by Naparik and um, I'm gonna actually sit the stock cams that are in this one, these clean ones. I'm gonna sit those in here and I'm gonna tighten it all up so that none of the rockers can fall out anywhere. And I'm gonna wrap this with plastic um, so that when it's, you know, in the back here, it's not gonna to get too, when it gets, you know, moved around and stuff during transport, it's not gonna like fall out everywhere and then lose parts because these have to stay with each cylinder and I don't wanna lose anything. And then I don't know how this happened, but Rohab's here in Okinawa. Hey Rohab. Hey guys. <laughs> Apparently, what were you saying before? What were you saying? Normally my line is, hey Rohab, we need to have a talk. Yeah, now we need to have a talk about this. Why? I'm not selling this to you, bro. Come on, come on we, can, we can come up to a deal, right? Can I offer, can I offer you like, what, 30 grand? You, you, thir Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't sell this, man. This thing oh. is just, is so cool. No, you better not sell it. I am not selling it. I don't even know like like all the parts that are on here too, I can't sell either. If I'm not gonna use them on this car long term, I'll use them on something else. There's just so much good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. The probably the only thing that I'll be get like throwing out are like the headlights. Like they're kind of too far gone. We could relens them, but I don't know, we'll see when we get them all out. But hey, I get first dibs, right? Yeah, whenever, sure. Whenever yeah. you sell them. Yeah, first dibs and everything. I know you got missiles and other S fifteens you're trying to save as well, so I'll give you these tubs when I cut them out and put oh, new ones please, in. I need to put that in the RV shell. The <laughs> thing definitely needs one. <laughs> Dude, how about this turbo though? I'm going to upgrade it to a new G, G series. That'll be perfect for an Arbery or a Jay-Z. Uh, 3071R. Well, that's a good size. Really good size for a 1J or a uh, RV. <laughs> It's going to be super laggy on a SR, right? Um, so 2.1. Um, it will be laggy as well because this is a really fat intercooler. Fat intercoolers add a fair bit of lag to SRs and smaller like mm -hmm. engines. But yeah, it, it, I don't know. Um, it 
be interesting. It sounds see. responsive when I've revved it up on the spot, but I don't know. It hasn't been tuned yet, so yeah. it'll be interesting to see. Maybe. What do you think, though? General general consensus on the car? I like it. I mean, I love it. It's missing that rocket bunny, to be honest, but... I'm it's fine. Yeah, Rocket Bunny's some, cliche. Planned, right? Yeah, we got stuff planned. We're, we're starting to, I'm starting to come up with ideas of what we're doing with this. I think we're going with the Rem and the Ram idea. You know, we got a pink one, we got a blue one. Rem and Ram. Then we just need Amelia and Subaru. I need a Subaru. You got a GC8? I do actually have one. All right, I'm going to get back onto this, guys. But as I said, we got the oil pen and everything cleaned up. I've already inspected inside the engine. I can see that's there. Um, I'm going to put everything RTV, seal it all up, put it all back together, fresh oil, get this thing running again. And uh, I'm going to mess around with the Apexi, get a little bit more of a leaner tune on this so that it's not dumping so much fuel in there. We also grabbed some fuel stabilizer to put in the tank uh, to get rid of some of the moisture and water that's probably in there. So we grabbed this from base and a bunch of other supplies, so should be good. Just quickly before I get the oil pan back on the engine, I wanted to show you a lot of that RTV and junk came out of the pickup. So I'm really glad we pulled this and cleaned that out because there was a lot of crap in there. And uh, yeah, I, I would not be surprised. It really does look like that when they took the head off this, um, that they probably just left the head off it in the weather and a bunch of water and crap got in there. So that's really what I think is what happened is when they took the head off that that's when everything got in there and they never drained and took the oil pan off properly. And that's why all that crap was in there. that time we got some fresh oil i don't even know what brand this is it came off base fvp verified and proven there you go all right verified <laughs> and proven engine oil i guess so some for her some for me to sip it on um blue ribbon i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yes take it Why is it so satisfying filling an engine with oil? Like, it's just lubing it up. Lubing her up, you know. At least this time it won't be milky. <laughs> are you gonna put like all the all the oil in there right now and then drain it again, or are you gonna? Um, yeah. So I'm gonna fill it up now. We're gonna let it run for a bit. I got a new filter on there. Let it run for a bit. Bring it up to temperature, and then I'm gonna dump it all again, and then fresh oil, another filter. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I think we're good to go. So I'll lower it down and. See where we're at. We've got four quarts in there right now. I'll just check the dipstick, but I think we'll probably need like another one. But yeah, so weird. I've never like dealt with oil in quart bottles like this before. It's a nice experience. Welcome to America. Yeah, where they waste plastic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just pouring this old oil out and get a load of this junk that came out of the oil pan that's just floating in there. Holy crap! Is that? <laughs> what the freak? That's a rocker retainer, like a, a lifter. What? Huh, probably from the old head when it, uh, yeah, that would be from the old head when it dropped the valve. I noticed one of them was missing. Interesting. That's crazy cool. We're finding little gems in the oil pan, guys. It's like digging for gold. Literally. Okay, well, that's that missing one from the, the, um, Naprick head. All right. I hope I didn't overfill this. Okay, good. Just, oh, look at the chunkies. Yum. <laughs> this is going to go to the oil recycle place on base. But, like, yeah. I'm so glad we pulled the oil pan. Like, look at all that crap, that milky stuff. And it was all, like, congealed and, like, like jelly, you know? I don't know if it tastes good. Glad well, we got that. I'm going to put that back in the head. Souvenir? Yeah, a little souvenir. I mean, I don't know what happened to the oil squirter. That's around here somewhere too, but um, yeah, man. I yeah. think I, I I put it back in the uh, in the head. Oh, you put it back. Uh, in the yeah, head. It's where, where it, it belongs. Yeah, yeah, put it back. Okay. Yeah, put yeah. it back in there where it yeah. belongs. Thanks, I appreciated you uh, putting that oil cap back on. <laughs> You're letting all that oil, <laughs> all that water in. Can I all just the water. say as well, that cap was off there for like what, like two, two days, days yeah. if that. Yeah. And where everything lines up, there this lines up with that. There's no way water would have gotten in there. And it was already rusty in there. He already took a photo and sent that to me 
before, so we already knew that there was moisture and water in there. So just so you guys know, a lot of people commented that and I was, yeah, wasn't the case. Anyways, I'm gonna keep pouring all the old oil into these containers and then um, we'll drop the car eventually and we'll uh, fire her up and hopefully uh, mess around with the tune a little bit on the Apexi, get it running a little bit leaner and we should be good. I just spent a bit of time cranking it. We got oil pressure already in the head. We're ready to roll. Cam angle sensors plugged in. Let's go. Typical uh, SR. Typical uh, Nissan. Typical Nissan. Sounds so healthy. Oh yeah.
mess with the Apex at all and get I it? I can, I can, but I just, I don't want to mess around with an Apexy because they suck. Like, the hand control is just really annoying. But, alright, maybe, maybe I'll try a bit. Alright, alright. Let me look at the map where it's uh, failing. Have you ever messed with one of these before? Yeah. There's a reason why even tuners in Japan hate power FCs. They're just a pain to use with the controller. You can get an app or like a, on a laptop, laptop and yeah, yeah. use it that way. But on the hand controller, it sucks. I got it all. all right. I didn't expect it. Gerald and the guys like move it around a bit. I'm, I'm curious if Gerald's gonna try something here. Do the monster. Oh. Yo! You gotta keep the revs going if you want that. Oh, he wants it. He's going back for seconds. Come on, Gerald, show us. No! <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it sounds so good. How was that, Gerald? That was, that, was, that was too smooth. That was too smooth? That was too smooth. It sounds good, right? Yep. Was, I need to get out before I drive it again. There you go, the Okinawa Drift Guru. <laughs> Just drove the S15. Has it got your blessing? It's got a good blessing. 
a good blessing. Now, yes. All right. <laughs> Yo, I was not expecting to be able to do burnouts in this thing today. Kind of mind blown, ain't gonna lie. And temperatures are good. Cars idling pretty decent, all things considered. But this thing's sitting for so long, and for us to be beating on it, and for it to be missing a, uh, I mean, doing stuff like this is fine. Missing an oil squirter, but uh, probably like hot, hot days. Like if you're drifting consecutively in the pistons. Well, they're forged pistons too. Technically, they don't need oil squirters, I guess. I don't know. Anyways, I'm curious to know your thoughts in the comments, guys. Uh, for today, I'm done. I'm so happy. I have. I have no regrets. No ragettes, guys. Seriously, just everything that happened to me in life led me to this moment and I'm happy about that. Anyways, I'm gonna park this thing back in the shed and we'll go from there. I've got everything wrapped and packed up in the back of the 15 now. Should be ready. We've got the battery charger on there, keeping the juice up, making sure that's all good. And uh, you know, this card number play used to be triple six and I figured we'd uh, counteract that with some sevens. So all the air suspension, every bag is at 77. We should be good for a while. And uh, yeah, also um, the uh, the wideband's back now. So we got wideband. So I guess I could do a little bit of tuning with this. So I found that interesting. Anyways, <sighs> car's pretty much ready for transport at this point. Uh, we should be good. I might come back here tomorrow and just triple check that the air suspension didn't leak. I don't think it has though, because it hasn't dropped at all since we uh, pulled apart and rebuilt that bag and, and everything. So I think we're gonna be all good in the neighborhood, but that's that. Oh man, I'm so excited. We got to do a burnout on this thing and this thing kind of low key rips. Hyped about that. But yeah, I think I'm gonna leave today's video here. I really hope you guys liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're excited for this S15 build. I certainly am. Let me know in the comment section what you think about the naming, you know, convention that I'm thinking of with uh, Rem and Ram. I think it's gonna be really, really cool. We got a blue one, we got a pink one, which means we're probably gonna have to make them twins. So I think that's a cool idea, but uh, yeah. Curious to know what you guys think, you're excited, and I will see you all in the next one. When this thing uh, gets to the mainland, we're gonna get straight into it. I think it's gonna be awesome. Anyways guys, thanks for watching. Smash that like button, write a comment, subscribe. See you in the next one. Peace, Jamata. Alright, here we go. We're pulling it out of the jungle. There we go. It's covered in grass. Yeah, it is. I help? Oh, okay, you're ready to roll. So the head's already been switched. Maybe the car runs? No, no way! <laughs>